Hello, welcome. Back in 2021, I started a video APO lenses versus macro lenses. I'm back in 2023 to give you the results. In today's video, we are comparing macro lenses compared to an APO lens. What is better, APO lenses or macro lenses when it comes to sharpness? We've got the Leica Macro Elmrit R 60mm 2.8 and I thought to try to keep it relative, I've got the Nikkor 60mm 2.8 autofocus micro both very good in their own right on their own system but how do they compare to a modern apo lens so one leica one nikon one voigtlander so i've got the voigtlander apo lanthar 50 f2 i shot all three lenses side by side did some geeky test results like i've done in some of my other videos to try to work out which is king when it comes to overall sharpness and if you just need one decent sharp lens Will an APO lens do, or do you still need a macro lens? Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So first, a bit of background information. So after discovering Leica, I still had Nikon film cameras, and I was trying to get the quality of my Nikon images up to that in terms of sharpness, clarity, whatever you want to call it, that I was getting for my Leica cameras. So I bought macro lenses for my Nikon film cameras, and that gave me a look that I was happy with. So the 60mm micro was my preferred choice when I was using my Nikon F4, Nikon F5. So this is my autofocus film setup when using the Nikon autofocus film bodies. Some years later, I discovered Leica R cameras, which are like SLR cameras. And so it wasn't long before I thought, hmm, I need sharper photos, let's get a macro lens. So that led me to getting the 60mm macro Elmrit R. Again, this in its own right takes amazing photos on film cameras. Size-wise, they are fairly similar the nickel is slightly bigger and then once you put adapters on these lenses to use them on say an sl all the test photos coming up were shot with the like sl so once you've got the adapters on they're quite a bit bigger than the voigtlander apo lens what about the voigtlander apo lens so again i bought the voigtlander apo lens because i wanted sharp results when shooting with my leica m3 camera and I'm not sure if you, you, you think the same as me, but I prefer to use sharp lenses on film cameras and soft lenses on digital cameras because the film gives an overall softer look to the image anyway. So then by having a really sharp lens like the Voiland Apo, it gives, you, it gives me like a happy medium between sharp and soft. So those are some real life examples. Let's now look at some geeky testing to work out what is better, macro lenses or Apo lenses. Okay, let's first start our testing back in 2021 when I was in Tenerife and I was comparing the Voiland Apo Lanthar against the Leica Elmrit 60mm. So I had some, I made like a set up a pile of things to use as like a, a test bed, both cameras and as many colourful things and textures as I could find. These are the results. So the photos on the top right are all shot with the Voigtlander, photos on the top left are all shot with the Leica Elmrit R. For my eyes, the Voigtland has got a slight edge over the Leica Elmerit in terms of slightly better contrast, slightly more saturation, but in some photos they look very similar. Ignore the exposure differences in that photo, but if you go back through them again, they're quite similar. Okay, on to 2023. Okay, so now this is me testing the two macro lenses and the Apo lens on the Leica SL camera. I was using this vintage camera as my model to test something against. You can see my setup, I've got various adapters to adapt these lenses to the Leica SL so I could compare them side by side. The focus around the Leica is much longer than on the Nikkor as you just saw. Okay, first test shots. Now you might need to go through these a few times but from my eyesight they're very very similar. The Nikkor seems to be slightly warmer which is the photos on the left. But in terms of resolution to my eyes I was struggling to see a difference. Colours of the leaves, again, very, very similar, hard to distinguish. Even when you zoom in, as you can see here, again, very difficult. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference in real life photos. So now Apo versus Leica. On the left, you've got the Apo. On the right, you've got the Leica. As you can see, the Voigtlander is slightly warmer than the Leica. And in terms of resolution, I think the Voigtlander looks slightly sharper. But because it's the 50 f2, it's got a slightly greater depth of field, helping sharpness. 
Before we continue, a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. They're the people that help support the channel and make these videos possible. And this is also my teaching platform. There's probably around 300 posts, over 80 behind the scenes model shoot videos. If you want to see how I shoot with models, check out the links below and back to the video. So those are the geeky test shots. What did you think? If we compare the Leica macro lens to the Nikkor macro lens, I would say it is almost impossible from little geeky test shots to tell the difference between the Leica and the Nikkor. Obviously in real world use when you're using these for real pictures, some of you may say that you can see a Leica look in the Leica lens and a, a Nikon look in the Nikon lens, but for my geeky testing, they're pretty much identical. In terms of if you want the best possible macro lens of these two lenses, I would give the winning title to the Nikon. The Nikon focuses closer, quite a bit closer in like real world when you see how the magnification of the final image and it gives you autofocus. Obviously it depends on what system you use. If you use like R cameras, obviously it makes sense to get the R lens and if you shoot Nikon cameras it makes sense to get the Nikon lens. And what about macro lenses versus apo lenses? From my testing the apo lens beats both macro lenses Maybe that's not a surprise as this is a probably what 20 years newer lens compared to these older macro lenses. Unless you want to do real close up like true macro photography, the Apo lens is probably better in every regard. It's smaller, it's got a lot better sharpness, even F2 comparing to these lenses at 2.8. Better flare resistance, better contrast for being an Apo lens versus a non Apo lens. It's kind of better con controlled in all regards. And you might be saying to me, but Matt, Rangefinder lenses only focus as close as 0.7 meters. Yes, but when you attach them to a close focus helicoid, you can probably get as close as around 0.3 meters. It's not quite as magnified as you'll get with the true macro lens, but if you really did want to do true macro work, you could use various tubes and other things to get the lens even closer if you're using a mirrorless camera. Obviously not so useful if you're using it on a Leica M camera. If you wondered how I just took those series of images, I'm using the nickel lens, which focuses is close anyway, on the helicoid adapter to let me get that close. So as you can see, there's the helicoid, and then it just focused really, really close. So the winner is the Voigtlander Apo Lanthar 50mm f2. If you want to learn more about focusing closer with your Leica camera, watch this macro video next.